All right. Uh, hello, everyone. Alex Camilio here, CEO of the Agent Inner Circle with agentinnercircle.com. And we are here today to uh, talk to and interview some of the agents um, who read an article that I did uh, a little over a month ago talking about doing a Halloween event. They picked it up. They turned the event into their own. They invited me to their groups. And I got to watch um, as just these incredible Halloween events uh, all digital unfolded. So I really wanted to um, sort of talk to them, have a conversation about what they did, what worked really well, uh, what could go better, because they each really adapted it and sort of made it their own in such an awesome way and an exciting way that they added other things and other pieces and like just expanded on it in such a cool way that I wanted to get all of that from them because I watched it unfold um, and uh, I thought there was a lot of uh, value there. So first of all, um, I'd like each of you to introduce yourselves. Um, let's go with Natalie, then Silas, then Tawny. How about that? Give us names, where you're located, um, you know, what you do in the business, how, and how long you've been in the business. All right, my name is Natalie Medina. I am a realtor and transaction coordinator extraordinaire. I have been licensed uh, for seven years in Las Vegas, Nevada, and uh, yeah, it's a good time over here in the in the heat. <laughs> nice, that's okay. awesome. I love it. We've got another guest. <laughs> it's so great. <laughs> I love it. Silas, what about you? Tell us about yourself. Um, so I'm Silas Sundenstein. I'm a I'm a real estate <laughs> agent in um, the Seattle, Washington area. Um, Who's with us? Who do we have with us? And, and with me is my uh, my uh, associate broker. Finn, um, he's helping manage the uh, logistics, the day-to-day -day logistics here at Lindenstein Inc. Um, I love been... it. <laughs> now I forgot the questions. Um, That's all good. So, all right. So uh, where you're from, uh, how long you've been in the business, and just a little about you, what you do as a, as a realtor. Okay. I'm, uh, so I've, I guess it's five years now that I've been doing real estate um, officially. Um, my mom was a real estate agent and I've always had it as a, like a, not a hobby, but I know I, I, I've been very fascinated with the business for a long time. Um, but I got licensed five years ago and I do host a, I host a home buying podcast, which has been pretty, it's getting pretty successful for me for referrals and, um, I meet more people nationally than locally, but that's, that's, that's fine. Um, yeah. And I'm really, I'm, I've, I'm making my business very, um, very sphere referral and attraction based. Um, I don't do a lot of chasing for business. Um, cause, uh, it's just not the way I want to, I don't want to do that. <laughs> that's the way to do it. So wh where are you located? You said locally and Seattle. I know, but. Seattle. I said okay. Seattle. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you. And, and that's exciting. Um, and Tawny, what about you? Hey guys, I'm Tawny Aubrey. Um, I live in Utah in the United States. Um, I'm a digital marketer. I'm also a realtor. Um, I've been doing digital marketing for probably about four years. Um, I've been a licensed real estate agent for one year. Um, just kind of decided to benefit from my marketing experience um, with real estate. So uh, my focus mainly in real estate right now has just been uh, generating leads for my team and, and just having my team work the leads and then I just take a, a split a commission. Um, I do I do work with clients from time to time. Um, and then my other focus right now, so that's kind of been my main focus lately. Um, and then working on my Halloween group. That's awesome. All right, so you, you brought up the Halloween group um looks like your camera froze a little there tawny that's all right we'll keep going here um so uh you brought up the halloween group and i mentioned it before that's why we have everybody here today um uh, so for those that don't know i'll i'll post it uh either down in the, the, the description below or um in the article itself if you're there and what i'm talking about is each of these agents decided to host a halloween event um, for their clients where and family and friends and leads apparently um, and all sorts of people 
uh, and they went really, really well. So um, first of all, let me, um, I guess let's do the same order for the next one. What attracted you to it? I know it first came up as an idea in a mastermind that we were doing, um, Natalie and, and Silas, but like what for you, what really attracted you to the idea of hosting a digital event? Um, why did you decide to, to add that piece to your business? Um, personally, Silas, I'm uh, sorry, Alex, uh, personally, what I decided to do was, uh, as you know, I also spend a lot of time uh, internationally in Canada. And with the pandemic hitting, uh, I'm a big face-to-face -face person, a big sphere of influence person, um, and I spend most of my time with friends and family. Um, so with the pandemic being completely on the opposite side of the country, as well as, you know, it being a seasonal, I love October and I love pumpkins. So I figured, you know, how can I make this an event where everybody can attend um, with, you know, in light of the pandemic on top of the fact that I'm not there. So mm -hmm. considering it was October, which is my favorite month of the year. Um, and most of the time, uh, it's very common at least that we see there's a little bit of a stall when the pumpkins come out. Um, I figured this would be a fantastic time to uh, go ahead and do some an, an event, most importantly for Halloween as there, I mean, we've seen a couple trunk or treats and stuff, you know, that have happened, but I figured a carving contest was something easily anybody could do, including children. That's awesome. That's really awesome. I love it. Um, and it's nice that it, it feels like, especially this year, is sort of a perfect year to start it where it's a great time. I feel like everybody's missing those events, those sorts of things, and, and you're spot on. It's like everybody was asking you for it, but in different ways, right? Nobody said, I want that one thing, but they all sort of needed something. Um, what about you, Silas? Um, like what, what drew you to it? Well, uh, one, I, I do love Halloween. Halloween's a favorite of the year for me. And I've always in the past gone too big for Halloween, decorating in the, the yard and such. And I did, when we, when it brought up, it got brought up in that mastermind, what really made me think about it was, was that all my, like every, because I have not been doing chasing for business, I've been caught in a position where all of, all the ways that I've met clients are gone for me. So to meet new people for the most part and just to get reminders about, uh, to remind me. And I was like, well, I can't do my client party, which I normally do in November. And so I was like, well, this, that would be a really cool thing. And I think it'd be good for the neighborhood because mm -hmm. we're all talking about, we don't know what to do for Halloween. And I don't know what my kids want are going to be able to do for Halloween. So maybe that'll get something in the neighborhood kind of going that we can celebrate. So, you know, it was kind of a combination of, of I need to find a way to connect with people still. And and using something that I really love to, mm -hmm. to do it with. So, um, yeah, so, and, and I always look for those things, like what what do I love? And then could it also help, you know, I guess community building or community strengthening for me? Yep, yeah. that's awesome. I love that, the, the community building aspect to it. Um, it's really, I'm hearing it from both of you about finding that sphere, finding that group, um, and, and really working heavily within that. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I guess I'll bug Tawny if she gets back. I think her internet cut out, um, which, you know, like I said, this is a real interview. We're not staging any of this Technology. or like any of that, right? Technology. These are Zoom meetings, and now we live these days, apparently. Um, so... Let, before we get in any further, I want you guys to talk just a little bit about your, we'll call them results. How, how did it go? I mean, what happened? How did it go? Um, was it, you know, are you going to do it again? And then we'll get into some of the details of, of how you guys made it, um, you know, work for you and so on. All right. I absolutely will do this again. Um, the results for it being the first time, I had a couple different contest prizes. Um, the competitions were adult, kid, and pet prizes. Um, so I had 12 submissions for pumpkins. I had five 
uh, kids submissions, uh, three cats and five dogs. So it ended up working out tremendously. And I think a lot of people had a lot more fun than they thought. Um, what I really, what, what really mattered to me was that engagement and those touches, uh, specifically with the sphere of influence it stated that Facebook group um, was made with my sphere of influence and with the closest people around me. So getting 12 submissions when we're talking about, you know, 50 to 60 people, that's pretty good percentage, you know? So um, with seeing that how it went, you know, the one thing I noticed is that uh, more people needed to know about it or they forgot. So it was just something that got me to kind of, you know, start thinking about it and get the gears going on how I can make sure that people you know, know about it next year. But yeah, I'm going to be doing this as a yearly event at this point. <laughs> love it. I love it. And I love the pet costumes. I didn't think of that one. And when I saw you did that, I was like, pet costumes. It's so perfect. Oh my God. Like, that's so great. I love those. Um, that was really awesome. So Tawny, welcome back. Um, these are the real, this is the real life that we live on Zoom these days. So I'm glad this is just a, a real example of how today goes. Um, so I'm gonna have uh, Silas answer this question, then I'm ask, gonna ask you both of the, the two questions that we just had there, um, Tawny. So Silas, what about you? Results, how did it go? Are you doing it again? I was, I was very happy with the results. Um, I, I had three categories. I did best outside decor because that's a big thing for me. Um, pumpkin carving and costume. And then I did within those, I had like the funniest decor, uh, scariest decor, um, funniest pumpkin, scariest pumpkin. And then in costumes, I did uh, best couple or group costume and most dead costume. Um, Cause I've always had a theory about, about Halloween that you can make any mediocre costume better by making a dead, right? Like, or bad, like I think a cheerleader is an awful Halloween costume, right? But a dead cheerleader, a cheerleader. that's, and then you get into how they died. Like, so just make it dead. Now it, all the categories had a bunch of responses except that one, which, <coughs> Good. Which is I really wonder picky. why. Well, oh, just the dead. I just thought there'd be dead, someone being dead, and it was like everybody was these Minecraft or something, and I was like, well, I guess she's the, the, the dead one, so she won. Okay. <laughs> well, that was an easy pick. I didn't even have to send it to judges. Um, <laughs> and then um, I think I got like four. I had at least four submissions for each one except that one for each category so but i also had people engaging that didn't enter you know mm. whether they were posting pictures they saw about halloween um you know there are people that wouldn't enter a contest on their on their own anyway but they wanted a way to be to be part of it ben stop so um rolling a battery around um so I was I was super pleased with the results and engagement, and I think more people will participate in the future. And yeah, I think I'll do it again because because I also have friends around the country. It's a nice way to build a community and stay connected on that one you know particular interest. And so I think yeah, I'll do I'll do it next year. And I think I'm hoping that more since people saw it, then they'll be more yeah. apt to join maybe next year and next year will be ideally great because we'll hopefully be actually out and people more likely that didn't dress up at all this year were like yep hey just snap a photo and put it in there and maybe they'll get a gift card who knows i love it so i i noticed you said something about judges so you got you got like you picked up other people as judges and like had an official people that didn't enter i did a google form so I want, this is great, actually, I because I was trying to figure out how to do it. I just like this last minute, I'm like, how do I get, I don't want to judge it. And I saw, I think I saw Natalie post something about she wasn't going to judge. And I was like, that's a good idea. You got to get out of this. 
And so I just contacted a few people that were, it was, la you know, I didn't do it until last minute. So I ended up contacting you more than, uh, originally I was just going to do three judges who are into Halloween. Yeah. But then I was like, you know what? Why not have more? Who didn't participate that I like and, or who, who likes judging people? So Everybody. I, I just put them, I put yeah. all them. Who likes judging people? Yeah. I put them all up on a, I used, found Google Photos. I was trying to figure out a way to, I couldn't find a, a clear just voting system online. So I combined, I did Google Photos and I made each category. I dropped them in there for each category and just put contestant one, contestant two, you know. And then I did Google Forms for them to nope. vote on and for each category. And then I, I think I ended up having eight, I had eight judges. And that made it a more clear, like, oh, well, this is a definite winner, this person. Like, everybody awesome. liked that. It wasn't just as weird. And I, I think that was actually kind of good because sometimes the frustrating part about the contest is if you have one judge and they don't. Yeah. Like, I did a food contest that I won because the judge liked his lamb. Um, this was a game show, so it wasn't a great dish, but he liked his lamb like more, he liked it well done, but you don't cook lamb well done. Right. So mine was more <laughs> well done. The other guys was better. And I was like, well, I shouldn't have won that category. But, <laughs> so I did That's like funny. the idea that, well, eight, you get, you eliminate those things of weird things that someone has. So it weird. I like it. But the, the one thing that comes to mind, Silas, is um, as these things get bigger, there are various, if you think about like what state fairs and so on do, judges are almost like political positions yeah. In, yeah. in state fairs and like all that sort of stuff. So like keep that in mind about who you pick and celebrity judges doing yeah. stuff. That's why I was picking like, I was going to do a few comics that I knew that are in, into Halloween, but I should have had them judge early, early on announced who they were and stuff and that would have made it part of the pageantry and theatrics of the whole, the whole thing. But I honestly, I didn't know how many people were going to submit. So I was a little nervous to get people involved and then there'd not be anything to vote on. I feel you. It's always nerve wracking going out on a limb like that. And like, yeah, starting from scratch with a, a group or whatever. Um, all right. So you kind of alluded to a question I want to get to, which is like, what are we, what would you do to improve? How do we, all that sort of stuff. But let me ask Tawny um, and catch her up on a couple of questions here. So first, what drew you to this? What was your, like, why did you do this? You know, what pulled you in to do it? And then what were the results? What, um, you know, would, would you do it again? What sort of results did you see? Um, that sort of stuff. Um, I actually was surprised that you wanted me to join this interview because I didn't do um, any contest in my group. My group was just a Halloween group. I was so busy with my book. I didn't get around to doing a contest. Um, but I, I did do some fun things in my group. And um, what attracted me to it was um, attraction marketing. I think that having a local uh, Facebook group for your community is a great way. No, oh, no. Community that people know. Um, and I, I've done local groups before, but I thought this one was going to be a big hit because it's Halloween and everybody loves Halloween. Um, in my community, Halloween is a really big deal. Uh, we have tons of haunted houses out here, tons of pumpkin patches. Um, living in a big city like I do, it's it's just really nice because we just have so much going on um, at Halloween time. Um, I thought that maybe, you know, because of COVID, you know, it could have been um, a lot more focused on events had we had more events this year than we usually do. Um, it, it went really well. Um, I, I had, um, I, I, I did like a poll in my group and I tried to do like funny things. Um, and so the re you mentioned you were surprised about me bringing you on. I kind of want to kind of, yeah. I'll address that. <laughs> why, why I did this because Natalie and Silas both did the like straight up, we're doing a contest, we're doing it within our sphere, we're pulling in people that we already know, friends, family, clients, all of that sort of stuff. 
And you took the idea and got a ton of interaction in your group, got a ton of comments and likes and, and all that sort of stuff. But you went at it from a very different angle, which is a lot of these people were leads of people you didn't know. And you attracted people from your community into this group. And then you sort of addressed it and went at it a little bit differently. So I guess tell folks a little bit about what you, how you did it differently um, because there's not always one, and this is the thing, there's not necessarily one answer to this question. There are a lot of ways to do these things successfully. And I, I wanted to highlight that because if it works for you and it works well, there's no reason not to share that with, with everybody. Yeah. Well, being a new agent, um, I don't have very many of my own clients yet. Um, so, I, so I did reach out to just the community in general to join the group. Um, what I did is I just went to all of the local uh, like buy, sell, trade groups, all the local like classifieds. Um, I did like a couple of like niche interest groups in my community. Like I did like all of the gaming groups because um, generally they're really into Halloween too. Um, and I just went into each of them and I just posted a link to my group and explained what it was for. And, you know, anybody who's interested in Halloween, come in here and we'll talk about Halloween. Um, and, and so it, it was, it was based more on, you know, for the whole community rather than just, you know, like my sphere. Um, nobody that I know personally is in the group except for Alex and then um, one of my friends. And other than that, that's it. So I just have like my two friends in the group and then a whole bunch of people that I've never met before. So, uh, yeah, so it was, I guess it was a different take mind on it. Mind-boggling. That's awesome. mind-boggling. I... So just to give some some results and so on, and, and you can get in touch with us for all the final details, but the one I remember is within, it was like 24 or 36 hours after you put out the invitation, whatever, et cetera, into some of these groups and marketplace and so on, trade groups, you had like 48 or 50 people, brand new people you've never met in your community that joined this and like got active within, and we're talking a day, two days, um, which to me is kind of amazing in terms of a, we'll call it farming, you know, farming technique, um, as opposed to the other side of it, which is the client, friends, family, that sort of a thing. Um, were there any like real specific tricks for bringing people in or how you got them involved or, or what you saw in terms of, cause it's a different quality of lead, I guess we'll say. Yeah, um, I just I just made sure to um, I was very careful with how I worded my post to get people to join my group. Um, also, when you post a link to a Facebook group, it shows the the cover photo. So I was really strategic with my cover photo. I made like a collage of like all of the well known Halloween spots in our city, um, like everybody's favorite um, haunted houses and pumpkin patches and things like that. Um, so I think that kind of attracted people. I did have several people in my group who invited all of their friends. So that was really helpful. Um, and I think it was just because, you know, this is a community where everybody loves Halloween. I didn't have to ask anybody to invite people. Everybody just wanted to. So it worked that's, out. That's great. And you're going to do it again? Oh, yeah. Well, and I also, um, I was thinking this morning about how you know, we're getting into Christmas soon. I can do like nightmare before Christmas stuff too. Like I can keep this going all year uh, just because this community loves Halloween so much. Um, I had an idea for um, a what is this contest um, since that's like the most popular like nightmare before Christmas song. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take like really close up shots, of common objects, things like that. And people have to guess what it is. And there'll be prizes. So I can keep contests going throughout the year. Um, That's amazing. I know Natalie had an idea too. <laughs> she and I had talked this week about, I know you're extending it, aren't you? Yes, I am creating a gingerbread contest. So with that uh, gingerbread home, I'm also considering doing the best outside decor. I know a lot of people love to decorate their homes on Christmas. In fact, some of them are already decorated as to begin with. So I think that'll be very, uh, very important for Chris. I think it's, it'll be a little bit, so there's so many, I have two different kinds of spheres. I have my Halloween sphere and then I have my like super into Christmassy kind of sphere. So I think that will help with creating a little more of the, uh, 
you know, a little bit more of a mix on when it comes to Sphere 2. So I'll be able to integrate a lot more different types of people in there too. Awesome. That's really awesome. Um, I, you know what, before we get into all the other things you can do and what you can spin it into and all that sort of stuff, because I do want to go there. Um, let's get into sort of what you would do differently or what you would, and I'll mention one because this is something that was all three of us have talked about, which is uh, once you carve a pumpkin, it takes, it usually goes bad in about 10 days, maybe 14 if it's really cold, and maybe like seven if it's not, which means that um, people don't car really carve their pumpkins until the last week of the, of, of, you know, um, October. So I remember like mid month, we were all talking like, are people actually going to carve a pumpkin? Is anyone really going to do anything? Is like all of that sort of stuff. I'm like, no guys, just hold on. Like, you know, it's, it trusts me last week of the month, all that sort of stuff. So I think one, one thing, and I'm going to update this in the article um, is that just keep that in mind that the, the flurry of stuff is going to happen that last week. Um, so that's, I know that's one that all three of you had and that we've talked about, but what are other things, Silas, you started to mention something that, that you, you know, might do differently with the celebrity judges or promoting it or things like that. What are some other things that you would do um, differently? I think I definitely want to figure out more, like I had good engagement on posts from people like asking like favorite Halloween say movies someone actually else did that actually but i would have got more engagement if i had done it i think i think i want to do more probably more videos to go to do that to cover it i think those will get more views and hopefully get people talking i'll just i think with time i'll just be able to plan it out a little better um yep. that was the thing i think i'll definitely be more relaxed about people not entering till the end I mean, you know, I mean, because you were right. You're right about that. Plus, and nobody's going to put up their costumes until they're ready right. for it. So it's all right. going to happen. Probably, you know, Halloween is when most people are going to actually enter the contest and yep. be okay with that. That is just yep. a run up to that. Um, I really liked, um, really liked what Tawny said. I think of, because I did that, tell people, invite all your friends. And some people did, you know, they invited significant others or there were some people not in it. Um, originally I made it an event. I thought I could do a month long event and it didn't mm -hmm. work. So I had more people that were invited to that by other people than then got invited to the group. So I, yeah, so I'm not sure. I need to figure out how to incorporate an event within that group, I think. And maybe, yep. you know, I, I, so I got to figure out the logistics for that and how people would work it. Um, I liked, I do kind of like the idea of a holiday group now that you said that, um, that you're switching it up, Natalie. But I, I do know there's people that aren't into Christmas. So that are into it, you know, fair number. So I'm trying to figure out like, oh, what I, should I do? A, I don't think I can do a Christmas group. I don't think I have the spoons for that right now. But so we um, do, um, I remember I've seen this at other places, but there are a bunch of contest type stuff that you can do that's not necessarily Christmas related. Yeah. Um, no, no, snow, I get, I get. snow sculpture stuff. If you happen to be in an area where that's possible, um, there are some other things and I, I'm actually working with some, we're all kind of working on this. Um, I'm going to be putting some more stuff out. Uh, I'm letting the cat out of the bag here, but um, there, we're, we're going to put some more stuff out about other ideas for events and things like that, that, um, that you can be doing. And I think I'm, we're trying to be mindful of that, of like, you know, you know, your sphere. So for your area, it might work perfectly of call it Christmas and you do that, but depending on where you are, uh, it may it may not who knows so it really i think is just about figuring out who you're going after yeah i but i like that she i like that tawny got other people into the group and it's interesting not it didn't even occur to me that i could get people in there without a bribe of prizes like 
which yeah. might have been more enticing to people if there wasn't actually if they just thought it was a normal group and wasn't silas offering prizes to get you to come in <laughs> join my my group um because somebody did mention to me when i had the idea about it and I, well well when i when i posted that i had the idea about it they didn't know um about our mastermind somebody said you're such a great community you're such great at, so great at building a community i'm like oh that's nice that they think of me that way and so i felt a little bad that i hadn't thought of it you know on my own but then i'm like well okay so what else could i do i need to maybe think about that mantle and you know tawny is inspiring me here to like oh maybe i can just Maybe I can build a community not related without offering prizes. My guess is the best is a merger of both worlds. Yeah. Um, who doesn't like prizes? I feel like I need I to know. insert something here real quick. Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, go, go for so it. When it comes to real estate, I feel like pretty much everything I've done has, has been um, through something that... Um, that I do through like the public groups, like not just like the buy, sell, trade groups, but like Facebook marketplace. It's how I get most of my leads. Um, and the, the whole reason that I do any of that is because I learned from uh, Joe Silzel. He's in this group. Um, he, he taught me, you know, like he doesn't run any ads whatsoever. Everything he does is through local groups. So I just kind of jumped on that too. And that's how I, that's why my first thought was, oh, I should go to all my local groups and invite people to my Halloween group. So just thought I'd insert that. Joe Silzel in this group. He's amazing. Great person to learn from. Definitely. Definitely. Shout out to Joe. Hello. Hello. Uh, I'll have to tag him in the video, give him the old shout out. Um, but no, you're you're absolutely right. It, there's a uh, huge value to being able to add people from the community, from the area. Um, and I think this year is probably perfect for it, um, you know, in terms of we'll say this year there was more of a need than I think a lot of years, right? I feel like the need is still there to some extent in any year, um, but it feels like this was a little bit more, and a little more standout. Um, Natalie, what about you? What would you change? What would you do differently? What are you going to do differently next year? Um, yeah. So I did get a lot of a uh, lot of views on some of my Facebook live videos when presenting the uh, Halloween stuff. So that, um, you know, I tried really hard just to be me, really, <laughs> and get people, uh, you know, excited to do something that wasn't pressured, you know, into like something salesy. So that was very important for me to do. Um, and I think I'll be doing more videos throughout the month. Um, originally, I did the videos as an accountability thing. Like if I do the video and say, I'm going to do it, I got to do it kind of thing. So that was my purpose with doing it at first. But because of the views, started seeing that people really started engaging and liked those videos. So I will probably do a little bit more videos to remind people because that was something that came up afterwards. Once the prizes came out and I announced who the winners were, a lot of people were like, oh, I didn't, you know, I didn't even realize it. You know, I didn't even see the invite. So that was a good inclination that I've got to find a way to continue to touch base. Um, I did do, um, I sent out, you know, uh, definitely some temp, uh, some transfer paper for my pumpkins too. So people could get a reminder that way. Um, but there were still a few that I've sent it, for example, and they didn't respond or weren't part of the Facebook group. So just something to keep an eye on is probably how I get that engagement and how I continue to stay in touch. So I can make sure that everybody is aware of the, of what's going on. That's awesome. I want to see this dental kit again. Just, just, just show it off. Just right so here. you sent out, um, you actually sent out stuff to people. I did. I did. I sent I out it. with actually, I have it here. So I basically had, I looked for a couple of different, this is serious. Um, I looked for a couple of different little folders. This one was the no bend folders for the transfer paper specifically. So I bought, first thing I did was make a list of, you know, who are, who I'm sending these things to. So I started with top 25 to top 50 database, uh, made a list. And then I went on to zombie pumpkins. Actually, I donated to their cause and I was able to get a couple different stencils. So what I got really particular about was the people who I sent stencils to, like some of them are cosplayers like Harley Quinn and stuff. So I sent her a Harley Quinn and she's, 
you know, with somebody who looks like, you know, Jon Snow. So I sent them a Harley Quinn and a Jon Snow together, you know, to kind of like make yeah, it a little it. personable. Um, and yeah, the, the transfer paper was good. You know, people got it. Um, I think that was a little extra touch too, because I got a lot of good feedback about those stencils too, when they got them. So again, they didn't actually that specific, those specific people didn't always submit, but it was a good little touch. And that's what I was looking for. That's awesome. That's really awesome. Um, I, man, I love that. That personal touch makes just all the difference in the world. Um, it really, really does. That's so cool. Wow. Very cool. Um, all right, Tawny, anything you would change, do differently, anything of that sort? Yeah. Um, so I've thought about this a lot. I know that the main thing that I'm going to do differently next year is when I go to my local groups and invite people again next year. Um, I definitely plan on doing that again. Instead of having a link to my group, I think I'm just going to post a picture, something Halloween related, and then have like a bit.ly link to my messenger bot. Um, that way I will be able to communicate with people through messenger, not just through my group. So I can remind them, hey, the contest is coming up on this day. Um, nice. and, and maybe even just have personal conversations with people because I know the whole point of this is to keep yourself top of mind to the people in your group. Um, so it'll give me like just another avenue to reach out to people in my group. Um, I also want to do like some live streams next year. So I think I'll live stream when we put up our Halloween decorations. Uh, we'll live stream when we carve our pumpkins. Um, we'll live stream if we end up going to like any Halloween events, if the pandemic is in a better place by then. Um, you know, when we go to like pumpkin patches and things like that, I think that we'll live stream it. That's awesome. That's really awesome. Um, one quick follow-up for you, Tawny, and, um, and I have two more questions and that's it. I promise I'll stop bugging you guys. Uh, so um, since yours were sort of more cold leads, can you give us a little bit of a response to have you been able to contact or in touch with some of them or any interactions with any of them or like give us a little more depth of, of what you've been able to do to build those leads. So I've done a lot of um, getting to know you type questions in the group. Um, like what's your favorite part of Halloween? Uh, we did a poll about candy corn. I tried to pick something that was like really polarizing. Um, and I thought candy corn would be probably the best option for that when it comes to Halloween. Um, but that's why I want to do, uh, you know, subscribe people to my messenger bot as they join the group, because I think that will give me like a no pressure way to kind of dive deeper with people and have personal conversations. Um, so far, we've just been doing it through comments. Um, whenever people would comment, I would try to find like common ground with them. Oh, yeah, that's my favorite part of Halloween, too. Or, oh, yeah, we do that with our kids every year, too. Um, and, that, and that's as, as far as I've taken it so far. Um, this year, you know, um, I definitely want to keep the momentum going throughout the year. And um, eventually, I, what I really want to do is find creative ways to kind of slide in real estate things as I go. Uh, but I think it's still kind of too early to, to do that yet. Makes sense. Totally makes sense. Um, all right. So I have one, we'll call it question, but I'll, it's really just a shameless plug. Uh, did the kit that I put together help you guys? Was that like helpful? I hope so. I did. I it, I I use it to to draw from the stuff, and it was certainly better than me coming like starting from ground zero. I was I, I read this and went like, okay, but I think I want to do it like this, which is funny. Like I was like, well, I'm going to do it as an event though, not like he suggested, and then it wouldn't <laughs> let me. And I'm like, oh, maybe I should have just Done listened that to that way. suggestion from the <laughs> one. Uh, okay, I'll I'll do that. Um, so yeah, no, I think I think it was really helpful to get i to get ideas and sort of like a skeleton for it at very least. Nice, nice. What about you guys, Natalie, Donnie? It did help significantly. Um, I get very tied down into the little details. So when I downloaded it and saw that it was, it was very basic, I mean, I could tweak it if I needed to or not. I mean, that went from 
probably it would have taken me like 45 minutes to two hours overthinking what the right verbiage is. Whereas when I downloaded that, I was like, boom, 15 minutes done. Let's get it published. Let's go. So it yeah. was super helpful for me to just get really concentrated on what matters. And I tweaked a little bit of it, but yeah, the skeleton was extremely helpful to get it out there. That's awesome. And you, Tani? She's I like, no, absolutely. it was terrible. I hated it. <laughs> I absolutely <laughs> second what they said about just having everything laid out to make sure that you had all the pieces together to put together your group. I loved that as well. Um, cause I'm the same way. Like I, I don't always get all of my goals done because I get too caught up in the details and then I just overwhelm myself. So I, I love having just step-by-step step, boom, 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 do all these things and you're done. Yeah. Awesome. I love it. That makes me so happy. And I, I just, for the folks watching um, this and made it to this point, if you haven't already checked it out, um, there is a, a Halloween kit that has a full download, includes the group description, the uh, invites and what to send people, the rules, the uh, pretty much the like, like they said, the skeleton of what you need. And it is free. Like I gave this away for free on our AIC blog. Literally just put your email address in and download it. Um, and it's, it's a free resource. Um, so it's really exciting to see that you know everybody has used it and it was helpful and and all that stuff it's awesome thank you guys um one very last question so we've talked a little bit about it and we alluded to it we got kind of to it earlier um but it sounds like everyone is going to spin this into something else into another group um i want to just brainstorm we've got some really amazing brain power um in this group here and i we've i've already pulled it some of it out of be the gingerbread right? Like the, some of the holiday stuff, getting into that. What are some other events throughout the year? Summer events, spring events, like what else? Cause I feel like we can spin this into an all year community, you know, fun community events for everybody kind of a thing. Um, what are some other ideas? What, what do you guys want to do? Because I'm going to go put together other kits. I'm going to go put together other skeletons that people can use, that you guys can use to go do this again and again. So what, what do you want? And if you're watching, put it in comments, put it below, tell us what sort of events you're interested in um, because I'm really, really interested to know that. I, I think for me, I think I will have a separate group for anything I do because I want it to be, um, it's, it's easier for me to, manage if i'm just focused on this is my halloween group and then i can go put anything halloween on there um or and then revive it later and be like it's back you know um and then as i do think i i mean facebook has been pushing it that way facebook is kind of pushing people toward groups anyway um you know pages are nearly dead like right unless like if you want people interact it is a group or your or your personal page um like i love the i lo i do like the christmas i love the christmas idea of the lights and i just don't know if i can i personally can manage it this year um i love trees i love the christmas tree idea um or an idea of, of focusing on that like what's your tree like it's a great one i just had a brainstorm yeah so uh -oh. when I was in like, sorry, I shouldn't just interject here, but when I was in like fifth and sixth grade, and I'll get pictures of these, there was a competition on making ornaments out of recycled goods. And there are a bunch of different templates, etc. And I made a, one year I made a log cabin and another year I made a, a little church and they were about, you know, yay big and all out of different recycled, et cetera. And they came out of May, like they really were pretty cool, but it was, it was so cool to see like all the different ornaments that people were able to create um, out of recycled goods. It was, it was really pretty, a pretty cool uh, competition that I was in as a kid. So I don't know if there's something there, but. Yeah, random idea. Nice. Saving like the environment, that. huh? Right. Well, yeah. I mean, why not, right? Absolutely. 
I think that's what it was. I think it was like a like a like environmental awareness slash whatever type thing. It was a long time ago. All good. Um, all right, other ideas, events, other things you guys want to do. So I definitely want to keep this particular group Halloween themed. I think that once we get into um, like summertime, I can get like free tickets to like um, the haunted houses, things like that, and give them out to members of my group, things like that. Um, but I think that a good, um, there's two groups that I think would be really good to keep in touch with people year round. Um, one is like a local group just for your city. Um, I have one group that it's called Living in Salt Lake City. And um, when I started it, it was something that I wanted to use to like interview local businesses, um, go to like my favorite places in the city, things like that. Um, I don't really keep up on it that well though, but if I did, I think that is a really great way to um, interact with your community in a local Facebook group. Um, another idea that I just had was uh, like a traditions group. And I think that would be a great way to keep in touch with clients throughout the year. And, you know, as every season comes along and every holiday, talk about what traditions you do during those seasons and during those holidays, and maybe even provide things at that time, um, like how you wanted us to do like pumpkin carving kits for Halloween, uh, maybe send out like do it yourself ornament kits for Christmas time. Um, maybe like do it yourself stuff for summer. Um, yeah, like a traditions group. I like it. That's awesome. That's really awesome. All right. So Natalie, you've already got yours. You, you're going gingerbread, but I know you had some others when we talked. Um, yeah. So uh, if you don't mind, you know, giving, a, giving it away. Probably an Easter contest, something okay. with like, decorating eggs or something. I feel like that's usually pretty something kids usually like to do as well, you know, so probably maybe even most creative basket, you know, I mean, there's, I'd like to play into some of the seasonal stuff simply because it's easy to do, you know what I mean? Yep. It's easy it's a holiday. It's something family oriented. It's something, you know, and especially the inclusion with pets, you know, that that's a big thing for me because mm -hmm. my sphere, if they don't have children, they have pets. So to have everybody feel included um, with their fur babies and their actual babies, that's a, a big thing for me. Um, and who doesn't like seeing a bunch of dogs and cats? I mean, I post cats literally every day, so. It's true, they do rule uh, the internet. Easter is an excellent idea. <laughs> excellent. You could host a, like a egg hunt for your clients Definitely. or for just everybody in your group and they can bring their pets. <laughs> That's very true. I'm, I could I'm also thinking, like do some sort of treasure map thing. Find I me. like that. Yeah. I'm wondering how you could do a digital egg hunt. Oh. Where like you hide little eggs in your posts throughout the whole month or throughout the the whatever it is. You add a little graphic of an egg or a whatever. And people have to, in some way, collect them all, collect all the yeah. eggs throughout whatever it is up to an Easter event. Or do like Silas did, like do an Easter egg hunt, but it's really like find the Easter eggs in this picture, like what references like to movies that. and stuff. Yeah, that was a good one, Silas. That was a really great and <laughs> engaging post, yeah. yeah. Or you could do um, an egg hunt where you hide eggs in certain parts of town and give a clue in your group and anybody who goes and finds it can post a picture of them finding the egg finding it yeah. I you like get it. A small business involved as well somebody who wants to host, host it or whatever keep the egg there or whatever be good so, yeah or whoever finds the egg has to go hide it and then they leave a clue of where they hid it that'd be awesome i like it all right that's awesome well, I think we got some good brainstorm ideas here. Um, we're closing in on an hour, so I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap this up. Um, any parting words, last comments, things anyone wants to mention before we uh, sign on out? I think because someone I forget which one of you mentioned it, but um, I'm gonna still I'm gonna go through now and thank everybody who posted anything in that group. Um, in the Halloween group, I'm going to go thank them because that's a good engagement opportunity. And, and it's polite. So why not? Good if point. someone came to a party, I would thank them right. for coming. So 
I should thank them for coming to this party, even if they didn't, you know, win anything or, yeah. I love it. That's great. Always encourage, encourage engagement, encourage that. That's awesome. Good idea. Yeah, I think that's a great um, idea. What about you guys? Anything else? Any last parting words, thoughts? Um, I hope that this project got the wheels turning for a lot of agents. Um, it definitely did for me because Silas is right. Groups are the future right now of Facebook. That's where your audience is going to see all of your posts. If you post on your business page, hardly anybody sees it. If you post on your personal page, only a few people on your friends list see it. But in your group, if you keep your group engaged, whenever you post, people are going to see it. It's a great way to stay top of mind. Yep. So yep. I'm a huge fan. I, I do want to give a little side comment here um, in terms of you mentioned something there, Tawny, which is keeping people engaged in a group. If you let your Halloween group go totally silent for like 11 months, it's almost like starting from scratch in terms of people actually seeing the posts in their newsfeed. Um, it's if other people start interacting, more people will and it'll grow and all that sort of stuff. But just be careful about like you, you, I think you mentioned it earlier, Silas, about like sort of turning it off and then bringing it we're back kind of a thing. Do something in between if you can to try to get some interaction or something in the interim there, um, because it really does make a difference of that continued interaction in a group. Um, all right, Natalie, final words. I think uh, I got a lot of ideas from both Tani and Silas for the next ones too. So I'm, I think Tani, that's really strong that you were able to get so many people from that don't, that didn't know you, you know what I mean? Because I, I also tried to post on some of the Craigslist and buy and sell and trade groups for, you know, getting a couple of different cold leads. Um, however, I didn't get very far with that. It seems, you know, at least for me that my friends and fam and sphere of influence is a lot stronger for me than the cold leads. But I think that's a really cool spin that you were able to get, you know, that many people, especially so quickly, um, because I ended up getting, I think it's like 64 people in my group, but it didn't really grow until the very last minute, especially. So the 64 people came, um, but it was like 15 people, 25 people, like it slowly started growing. So I think that's really powerful and that's super strong that you were able to get so many people in such a small time as well cold leads awesome i love yeah. it well this is what happens when you bring great agents and great minds together um they share awesome ideas and all their successes and, and all that awesome stuff so uh, first off, thank you to all of you three. Um, thank you, Natalie. Thank you, Silas. Thank you, Tawny. Uh, I greatly appreciate you taking the time to do this with me today. Um, I really appreciate all that you're you know, giving back for other agents. Um, hopefully, we gave some agents some great ideas. Uh, if you got some great ideas, put them down in the comments below. Um, I'm also going to mention we've talked a lot about groups. If you're watching this from the AIC uh, page or if you're watching this from the Agent Inner Circle blog, um, go join the Agent Inner Circle Facebook group. Um, you know, we've all alluded to it here that they've met each other and we've met and so on in, in groups and shared ideas and so on. Um, it is incredibly powerful what you can do uh, inside of a Facebook group. So I greatly, uh, I, you know, appreciate everything that all these agents do. Um, to give back and to help one another. So thank you to everybody in the group who is there. Um, but if you are not there already, it is amazing the community that we have there. So uh, I would highly suggest going on over. So um, that being said, thank you again. Uh, this has been Alex Camilio, CEO of the Agent Inner Circle with agentinnercircle.com. And I hope you all have a wonderful day.